Are you ready? I think so. I think so, too. Uh, it's Alex Mack on All 106.3. I'm sitting here with Hosier. How are you, man? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time to come out here. Welcome to Iowa. Thank you. It's good Have to you be been here. to Iowa before? I think we've passed through. I, I'm trying to remember the last time we, we, if we did a show here. I think we have, but... Uh, Never, never in the countryside like this. So this countryside, really your first hinterland. Yeah, you just watched Jade Bird, right? Yeah, it's great. How set. was she? Great set. Yeah, uh, great uh -huh set is like her. one of my favorite songs. It's so good. She's, yeah, she's fantastic. She's an incredible voice and just an amazing um, energy on stage. But she was supporting me a few months ago, uh, but not with that band. So that's the first mm -hmm. time I really got to catch her with the with the full band. Nice, just great. kind of as a spectator hanging back. That's yeah. always nice. Yeah. So I saw you back um, in 2015 at Bonnaroo. Mm -hmm huge audience yeah absolutely massive yeah what's what's it like coming to sort of a smaller festival like this or maybe playing like more of a club type show is, is yeah. there a different show or how, do, how does that translate I, I love it yeah i love it um i think it's it's super fun obviously and super amazing experience doing a huge huge festival and doing doing small rooms is like a tr it's such a trip it's like you yeah know, you come back and you're close to the audience. It's hot. It's sweaty. You can see them. You can hear them. You can kind of you can feed off that energy so much so much easier. Mm -hmm. uh, large festival stages. You're you're kind of you feel you can feel far away from a very large group of people. But like, so small festivals like this is like super super fun. It kind of recharges the batteries a little bit as well. Oh, I like that, especially yeah. with the new album, which I love by the way, Wasteland Thank Baby. A kind of a, a serious album, but I like that you call it love songs for the end of the world. Yeah, yeah. which I, I think is just an awesome way to put that. We're kind of in a serious time right now. Mm -hmm. So I want to get your advice for the end of the world, whether that's right. in, in this political climate, emotionally, environmentally. W what's your advice for the end of the world? Jesus. Um, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Do you mean like, do you mean the, 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 the actual end? The, like the, the it's however you want to take that. <laughs> okay. Because um, to some people, the end of the world could be a breakup, you know? So yeah, like yeah. For, for your end of the world, what's your advice? Um, I, w I would say look, kind of look beyond the... the the no the noise and the and the and the roar and the glitter of 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 all of it and look to the cause of of things you know but and and tackle that where you can organize and tackle where you can but also like aside from all of that the actual stuff is just remember what's important and try to stay close to uh, the people that matter if you only had 24 hours left you'd, you'd probably want to hug a lot of people yeah and, yeah <laughs> get, that, that kind of makes you think like you know you've got 24 hours left who's on your hug list yeah, yeah. i, I kind of like that yeah uh, so there are so many tracks on wasteland baby and and you know nina cries power especially is kind of a protest song mm -hmm. and and i was thinking like do you think that there's a lack of protest music in 2019 i mean when you look back at like bob dylan and mm -hmm. ccr mm -hmm. i mean do you think that we're sort of missing that right now i think i think it depends i mean i think that music is still being made uh i, th I think important things are still being said it's not so much in rock and roll that, that, I, that i hear there's a lot of great punk music being written but and being being recorded maybe that that finds its way into onto mainstream radio and stuff but maybe po possibly not i think i think some of the m more uh important truths being told are are, are, are being told in in, in hip-hop and, and, and r&b i'd agree um, with that yeah mm -hmm. um but it, it sometimes can feel that way i suppose so like I, I think the song was really just about you know looking to that legacy as you say and just saying look here's here's all of these artists that were incredible for 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 what they what they i suppose what what they what they offer us now even still as, as a place to look to and, and a well to draw from you know um, but yeah so sometimes it feels that way yeah would you call your music protest music like a new a new birth of protest music maybe I w I, w I wouldn't I, I kind of shy away from the term protest music it's, it's a harsh term but you know yeah. what I'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think um, all I try to do is, is to kind of tell the truth of, of things as, as I see it and, and try, try to tell the truth and, and write about stuff that that interest me or or I, I find I find uh worth saying or trying trying to draw attention to and trying to tell the truth in, in that experience of, of it. Um and sometimes if that that can be if you know, telling the truth can be a radical act and mm -hmm. it's certain times and increasingly it can be a radical act. So yeah, that if if uh so but for me like I don't differentiate between music that's "Quote unquote political and music that's non-political is like there's always a political dimension to something. So it's really just how you look at it, I suppose. Yeah, I think yeah. that that's definitely like a good lens to re-listen to the album with mm -hmm. that in mind. You know, it's not necessarily like I'm here to stir the pot, but yeah. we can open our eyes a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, and we no matter what, even if we if we're not keeping our eyes open, we're still 
uh, you still are going to be affected in some way, shape, or form with the, with the climate that you're living in, and, and right. the and you know, and all of its effects that on you, socially and economic, etc. And it's just trying to confront some of that, or at least look at that some, sometimes. You know. Yeah, super well said. Well, I want to ask you also about um, your subway performance. Was that your idea, or how did that happen? Um, yeah, I was in New York at the time. I was um, where where my label office is. We were. We were doing some kind of promo just the week before the record, and it was somebody. It was somebody in the office's idea. I can't. Um, was like, hey, would you would you be up for just like hanging out down in the subway, do, doing a few songs, just almost busking, kind of busk, yeah, yeah. As, as a way to say thanks to to fans and say hey to a few people. And I think it was just like a 24-hour turnaround. We just checked with the cops, be cool with it, and then put up a thing saying, look, th- whatever station was underneath Rockefeller P- Plaza. And uh, yeah, it was like super, super quick to organize it. We just ran down there and, and did it. And it was a good vibe and it was nice. I'm jealous I wasn't there because your voice is so powerful. And just to be in that space with all the echo, I feel like that must have been Thank amazing. You. Thanks. It was fun, man. It was fun. I think most, like, I mean, it's it was like high traffic, a high traffic time. I think most people were just like, who's this dude covering Hosier songs? Well, yeah, I was going to ask you, like, did people think that it was you right away? Or were they like, oh, he's, this is a busker, you know, doing covers? I think there was a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people who, who thought that. And, uh, which is fair enough, I guess. <laughs> and then also, people are on the way to work and stuff. So it's, right. uh, or on the way home from work. Um, but it was nice. We had a nice crowd there. And it was lovely to just say hey to fans and stuff. Yeah. So this is your first Hinterland. And one of your friends is on the lineup with you. Yeah. Brandy Carlisle. Yeah. Um, I know you guys have shared the stage before. Mm-hmm. Are we going to see any of that this weekend? I know tour schedules are rough, but yeah, I don't, th- I don't think so. She's playing tomorrow, I believe. Is she? Or Sunday. She's playing Sunday. Okay. I didn't so. know if you were just, you know, so taken by Iowa. I that would you love you might want to hang out Dude, in Iowa. If I, yeah, if I could, I'd just disappear that way, and then, like, <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd crawl out of the woods then on Sunday and hop on stage with Brandy. Um, I'm. I love Brandy and her work is, is just incredible. Um, got to share the stage with her recently. This time around, sadly, we drive out of here tonight and uh, I, move, I think I'm going to Canada for a few shows. But yeah, I, we'll I saw that. And so you were just at Lollapalooza in Chicago last night. Yeah. yeah. And then here today. Now, Lollapalooza, again, a much bigger festival. Mm-hmm. So say somebody's coming to Hinterland for the first time, mm-hmm. they're seeing you for the first time. Mm-hmm. What's something that you really want them to take away? Um. Oh, my goodness. Um. I would just... I would just... I think... Like like any show, especially a festival setting like this, it's just like a lovely grassy hill. Um, just 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 try to I don't know, be present in it. Like watch watch the show, enjoy it, grab a grab a cool beer, have a have a have a picnic, and Perfect. and don't you know? I don't think it ever pays off watching a show through a phone or record. You know that that would always I be my one thing. Love that. Yeah. Love that answer. Well, thank you, man. I'm so excited to see you tonight. Thanks, uh, Hosier. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you very much.